and welcome to Miss Brown attempting to teach math from her laundry room, part three. You might be thinking, but Miss Brown, I've only seen part one. Where's part two? Well, Miss Brown did part two without pushing record. So here I am to do all 30 minutes again. <laughs> I'm very excited for take two of part two, which is really part three, but it's actually part two. So math, here we go. All right, I am gonna share my screen with you so you can see what we are doing today. Today, we're gonna take our knowledge from last video and we're going to use our degrees and a protractor to measure angles today. So I am going to show you our different anchor charts from the last time that we were here so that you can see a little bit of what we did the uh what we did before so we've got remember we looked at a full circle 360 degrees was our full circle three-fourths of the circle was 270 degrees a straight line which is what we're mostly going to work with today was 180 degrees and then our right angle or a fourth of a full circle was 90 degrees. And remember, that's our little L shape that we can make there. We also talked about acute angles, right angles, and obtuse angles. We're gonna use a lot more of these today as we look and measure angles with our protractor. So remember, acute is less than 90, obtuse is more than 90. When we think about acute, we think of acute little angle, which is 90 degrees, so it's a small one, and then obtuse would be like an obtuse angle, so that's a big one, more than 90 degrees. And then our perfect right angle at 90 degrees. So today, you are going to look at protractors. And when we look at protractors, I want to show you what we're kind of working with here. So I'm gonna start out with a number line because a protractor is basically just a number line. Take a look at my number line. If you'll notice, it goes from zero to 180, which remember was our straight line right in the middle between zero and 180, I have 90 degrees. So when I look at this number line, I see that we count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180. I'm gonna show you a different number line and I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds to think about how it's different than this number line. Your new number line looks like this. All right, so what you should have noticed is that it is the same number line, only it's backwards. I've got zero to 180 with 90 right in the middle. I'm gonna show you both of these together. Notice my zero and 180 match up here and here, and my 90 matches up right in the middle there. Fun fact, protractors are really just this, this number line. But if you'll notice, the protractor is on a curve. So I've got my 90 in the middle there, my zero in 180 over here, and my zero in 180 over here. And then this is the middle of my protractor where we're going to line up the vertex. So let's try one of these. I want you to see that a protractor is a tool for measuring the size of an angle. So I'm going to show you a couple of problems where we use the protractor and then a couple other problems where a protractor is provided for you. So let's read this first problem. 
Emma wants to make a clay sculpture of her daughter as she appears in the photo from her dance recital. How can she measure angle D, C, E, or the angle formed by her daughter's arms? So we're gonna use this protractor. So our first step is to place the protractor at the center point of the vertex. So if I had a big protractor, it would look like this. Here's my center point. I'm gonna get my center point here and line it up just like that. And when I put the center point there, notice how I line this line up with zero over here. That's very important that our base is zero which is exactly what step two says to align the mark on the scale of the protractor with the ray C E. So that lines up right there. Then next it says, find where ray C D intersects the same scale. When it means the same scale, it means the same number line. So I see this is zero, I'm gonna count by tens up to where this intersects. So I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Remember right here is my perfect 90. 100, 110, 120. So it intersects at 120. And we know that it is 120 and not 60 degrees. They're both listed on top of each other, but we know it's 120 because this angle is obtuse. So that means that the measure of angle DCE is 120 degrees. So the angle formed by Emma's daughter's arms is 120 degrees. Let's take a look at some other problems. This, it gives us a me an angle measure and we've got to figure out which one matches. So Kate tosses a stone in the water at a stone skipping tournament, which sounds like a whole lot of fun. It forms a 20 degree angle with the water and skips many times. Which angle measures 20 degrees? So our major angle that we're looking at is 20 degrees. When I think about a 20 degree angle, I've got to see, is that acute, right, or obtuse? Well, 20 is not more than 90, and it's not exactly 90, which means that it's an acute angle. So I'm going to be looking for an acute angle here. Let's go down and look at and identify whether all of our answer choices are acute or obtuse. When I look at A, I can see that it is less than 90 degrees because this would be my 90 degrees, so this would be acute. This guy over here is less than 90. So it would be acute. This one's even smaller, so it's less than 90. It's, it's that acute. And finally, look at D. D is obtuse. And we know that because it's larger than my 90 degree. So it's obtuse, and we know that 20 degrees is acute. D is not going to be my answer choice. So now we get to measure A, B, and C. I'm going to take my tool, my protractor, and line up my vertex. Since this angle is smaller, I'm going to extend this line out so I can read it on my protractor. But I'm still going to match it up at that dot. So I'm going to take my dot and match it up with zero. I've matched it up with zero this way. Notice, I don't need to match it up with zero this way 
because my angle isn't going, isn't facing this direction, it's facing this direction. So I line it up with the one over here. And then I count up. Zero, 10, oh, zero, 10, 20, 30. It lines up and goes through my 30 here, which means this angle to measure is 30 degrees. 30 degrees is not 20 degrees, so it's not gonna be A. I know it's not C because C is even bigger than this one and 30 is too big for 20, but let's check it out just in case. So I'm gonna line my vertex up and I'm gonna see, let's extend this line. I'm gonna line my vertex up and start counting at zero, 10. Notice I didn't go zero, 170 because that's not the way that numbers work. <laughs> I'm just going zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just counting up like normal. So I go zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Since it's acute, it's not 130, it's 50. So this measures 50 degrees. And like we said, we use process of elimination and took that one out. And let's double check that this answer choice is correct. So I'm gonna extend my line and I'm gonna line up my vertex right in the center here. I'm gonna line up my zero and I'm gonna go zero, 10, 20. And I have 20 degrees in this angle. The next problem I'm gonna walk you through, I am going to leave some space for you to make sure that you are figuring out how to solve this on your own. When you get to your independent practice, I want you to be successful. So that means that I'm gonna have a little bit of guided practice here where traditionally you turn and talk to your neighbor or work with your partner, but here's where we are. So let's move down to what is the measure of QRS. I'm going to help you out by silently giving you your first step. Now, when I look to see if obtuse is more or less than 90 degrees, I realize that it is more than 90 degrees. So I want you to think about what answer choices can you eliminate knowing that this is an obtuse angle and that it has to be more than 90 degrees. Absolutely, 35 degrees and 45 degrees are lower than 90 degrees. So that leaves C and D. So I'm going to extend my angle so we can read it on here. And here we go. I'm going to line up my vertex and line up zero. We're on this side now because our angle is pointing this way, not this way. So I'm gonna line this up. And I'm gonna see, starting at zero, counting upward where this lands. I'm gonna start and count by tens. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 
31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So this clocks in at 135 degrees. 135 degrees. Now we're going to move to some questions that will be a little bit more familiar to you when you go forward. Um, these kind of questions already provide you with your protractor. This is going to be really helpful at home, especially right now since none of you have a protractor. So let's look at this first one and we're going to solve it together. I have two different steps for you. Our first step, let's see if you can remember it, is, yeah, we're gonna label our angle. So we've gotta see if it is acute, right, or obtuse. Well, let's look. We know that a right angle makes a letter L and it is larger than that. So if we've got a, an angle that is larger than 90 degrees or more than 90 degrees, it will be obtuse. Now I know this is obtuse, that means that I'm gonna be looking at the larger set of numbers. So when I look here, the easy way to do this is to say 70 and 110. Well, 110 is the larger set, so this angle must be 110 degrees. But we need to double count to make sure. And notice, I have this on my second step. So start at zero and count up to the line segment or ray, which is this one right here. So here we go. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 1, 10. Perfect. That's what we got. For number eight, I'm going to have you try this one without me. Notice I can see that when I start at zero and count up to my line or array, I've got zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, but because it's in between 40 and 50, I need to count by ones. So 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. This angle measures 45 degrees and we can double check that by saying, well, we said it's acute, and is acute less than 90? Is 45 less than 90? Sure is. Looks like we're good there. All right, at this point, it is your turn with the exit ticket. Your exit ticket is below. Make sure that when you get your exit ticket done, you can snap, well, you can either, for this one, you can either snap a picture or just draw and write to your teacher because all you have to do is prove your answer about whether Sally is correct. It says Sally thinks the angle below measures 40 degrees. Is Sally correct? Explain your thinking. You may either comment on the video or um, turn it into your teacher uh, through the messaging. It was lovely to see you today for what I thought was the second time. Well, the first time, but now it's the second time because I've done this twice. But either way, 
I hope you all are staying safe and staying healthy and you get outside to play. Bye.